guys in this video, I'm going to build up uh, some flows to help with site master planning um, and talk a little bit about the concept of master planning and talk a little bit about the concept of flows. So to do that, I am going to draw a boundary on quite a large site. Now, I'm going to turn the buildings off in a second. Um, but let's just do this site and I'll say template master planning widgets. And these are going to be separate widgets, but the way the giraffe works is widgets can be strung together. They are composable. Each widget is a function. It takes in some data and it puts out some data after doing something useful uh, and they can be strung together. Okay, the first thing when we talk about master planning is, is this is what I mean. You will see that in Giraffe, in the native usages, we have uh, these land uses. So say I wanted a high density mixed use usage, right? You can see it's got a height of 27. I'm just gonna change that to 40 meters. Floor space ratio of two and a site coverage of 0 0.9. I'm gonna change that down to 0 0.7, okay? Now, if I draw a polygon, I'll just actually create that one as a polygon and I do high density mixed use, Okay, this polygon has an area of 62,890 square meters, but the buildable area is twice that because the floor space ratio, often called the floor area ratio in America, is two. So you take the area of the site, which is 62,000, and you multiply it by two. And the maximum height is 40 meters. It's about 120 feet. It's about 10, maybe 11, 12 levels. And the site coverage ratio is 0.7 to 70%. So this envelope actually tells you how much built area there is. And we can calculate, therefore, how many dwellings there are. This is a useful piece of geometry. So I'm going to start with, and I'm going to say areas and dwellings. All right, and we create this category. Now, I'm just going to get the, I'm going to get total area. It's going to be in square meters. I'm just going to get the gross area. And I'm going to um, get the floor space ratio. I'm going to go A times B. All right, it's 125. So it's 62, 890 times 225. And now if the average dwelling is 100 square meters, we can work out how many areas there are, uh, how many dwellings there are. Total dwellings. In dwellings, the unit of measure is dwellings. And we're just going to get that total area and divide it by 100. All right, so useful. And so you can see if the site shrinks, it falls down. All right, so that is, and let's call this a total planned area. So if you're a strategic planner, this is enough for you. You know how many dwellings are going to fit in this envelope under this kind of control. Uh, and if you turn on the zoning layer, like the actual within New South Wales, within this jurisdiction, you turn that layer on, you'll see lots of little envelopes. Like you, there they are. This one's called R3. This one's called MU1. Ours is called high density mixed use. But these polygons and this polygon, they're the same. They're controlling the same kind of thing. In New South Wales, the zoning, the floor space ratio, the site coverage are encoded in separate controls. They're not all in the same polygon, but the idea is the same. Is a very useful bit of geometry. But it's a pretty unsatisfying because cities don't look like purple blobs. Cities look, you know, ultimately like this. So we're going to work our way there. And, and as we do it, we're going to build some, some cool widgets. All right, so back to our blob. So let's uh, create a drawing layer and we'll call this uh, uh, planning. Let's call it the planning blob. All right, and that's what it is. And we'll pop this on. Okay, now the next step is what I would call build, uh, planning envelopes or, or detailed uh, envelopes. So rather than a blob, we're going to do some envelopes. And these envelopes, don't uh, they don't represent buildings, but they're closer to buildings than this blob. All right, so I'm going to turn that one off. Okay, and now this is where we'll actually start drawing. Now... You can see in our zone, we've actually got some roads. So what we can do in Giraffe is draw roads. And normally when you see these planning envelopes, which are often called structure plans, 
you will see that the planner plans the public domain more than the private domain, which when you think about it makes total sense because the planner generally owns, which is the council owns or has responsibility for the public domain and they don't own the private. They're actually setting controls or structures to structure the growth of the private domain. Okay, and what we're gonna do to do the planning the, the private domain is we're going to you know do a few flows and sort of show you what I mean here. All right, so we've got these three, and let's say we're going to put some retail here. The simplest kind of planning envelope is, is quite literally an envelope. So I'll show you what I mean is you draw uh, another blob, it's a different kind of blob, and we could give it a, a use. Um, but I'm actually just going to keep it blank and I'm just going to give it a height uh, and a base height and a color. Okay, all right. Now, the base height I'm going to set to zero in this instance. So let's say we want a 12 meter street wall. And let's make this thing colored a bit more, something like this. Okay, all right. So we want a 12 meter street wall. And we may say, Rather than just fronting the the site here, we're going to have a setback of three meters. So I'm going to drag that back three. And to this street over here, we want the street wall directly on the pavement, right? Now we're going to copy and paste this guy, and we're going to give his base height 12. And what we would normally do is then above that street wall, let's go five, 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 and five as an equal set back on all sides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the height of this planning envelope up to the height control of the blob. Um, so if I just turn X-ray on so I can select it, and I just increase that thing's height until it penetrates the blob. So it's about 28 meters, all right. Now you can see here's the blob, and here's the planning envelope, and this is not a building. We would not expect a building to entirely fill this envelope, but it's closer to a building than the blob. And you can see that ratio, right? This blob is calling, if we look at the usage, which is um, identity mixed use, is calling for 70% site coverage. And you can see this planning envelope is mandating that this is not covered. So it's already starting to say of the 30%, of the site that is not covered by buildings, this bit is part of it. All right, and so you can see there's a pretty decent little planning envelope. So now let's try and automate that a bit more. So I'm gonna draw another rectangle, and now I'm gonna open the flow builder, and I am uh, just gonna shrink it and open the, the builder now. You can see I've offset this polygon. And I've got my reference polygon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the reference as the bottom and I'm gonna do the offset as the top. So this reference, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, delete all this stuff, which, which we don't need. Uh, and I'm gonna add those three special properties. I'm actually gonna give it a generic 3D use with a height of four, the base height of zero. I'm gonna set that height to 12. I'm gonna add that color property. And I'm gonna set that to something like that. And I'm going to set this to generic, generic 3D and stack up and I'll set its height. I'll set this thing's height to 28 and I'll add that color, which I'm just literally going to copy from there, this blue. Okay. If I save, we can see that we're getting, you know, something's happening. I don't know why this thing's not stacking. Stack and this one we also want to force stack. There we go. All right, so now they're stacking up on top of each other. So I just force stacked, and you can see um, I've actually got exactly the same, but in this instance, I've used some of the functions, some of the little widgets. I've built a little widget in Giraffe. And what's nice about this widget is uh, it does some things automatically. So when I did this one, I had to calculate the, I had to set the base height. So if I change this 
up, then I have to 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 23.1. Then I have to come to this guy and change him to 23.1. Whereas with this, if I grab the bottom one and change the base height, the top one will stack up. So that's nice. Uh, and the offset is also uh, automatic, which is five meters on all sides. So let's just make this widget slightly more friendly. So I'm going to take that generic 3D. I'm going to do its display name. So this has a height of 28. So I know this is the top envelope. And the, this must therefore be the base envelope. So now I don't have to guess what's top and bottom. And so I can change also now the, the offset. So I can grow it or I can set it to minus, uh, let's set it to minus 8. So that means an eight meter offset uh, on all sides. Uh, and that's a pretty decent little envelope generator. And so now what we can do is let's put this thing over here and draw some envelopes on this northern side. Something like that. And you can see here, I'm, I'm again manually doing this. I'm using that alt key to, to drag a copy but I've created some, some building envelopes here. And again, you can see I'm leaving space for, um, as in the site coverage is not entirely by building. I'm kind of mandating where some of that site coverage uh, or that open space or uncovered site is gonna be. All right, so now what I wanna do is I actually wanna, um, uh, let's, let's just get that guy back there. So I'm actually gonna delete that guy because he's frustrating. And I'll delete that guy it's because I'm going to use my, my newly discovered widget. I'm going to do that. Now, there's a weakness. So and then there's the, the even widget. Let's snap it to where it needs to be. And then what we'll do is we'll pull it back exactly three meters. So there's kind of some manualness to it. And what Giraffe doesn't allow right now is variable offset. So very frequently with these kind of envelopes, you'll see a 10 meter offset to the front and a five meter offset to the side, whereas all of these offsets in this structure plan are the same. And so we'll, we'll, there'll soon be a, uh, in giraffe, there'll soon be a, a variable offset. I'm just gonna turn on that planning blob just to ensure I'm at the right height. I am. Uh, and so I'll keep doing this. Uh, and one like this. And let's do another one like this. And maybe we say uh, in this area of the of the street, we want to maintain some sort of linearity down here, but and we want to enforce more of a setback from this busy road. So over here it's three meters because this side's quite narrow, and we do the same thing over here. So there's like a, a this zone which is set back. Okay, so I've changed my tune. And I'm going to do this in a different way. And rather than using generic 3D, I'm actually going to use a, uh, a building usage because that's going to be better for the Giraffe Analytics engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create from um, commercial, I'm just going to create envelope, building envelope. All right. And the efficiencies don't matter. Let's make the color like a gray, blue. Sorry, let's make it a blue like uh, like it is on the screen. Okay, and save changes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come into here in this base envelope. Rather than generic 3D, I'm going to use the envelope usage. I'm going to set the levels to four. I'm going to delete the height and the base height and the color. I'm just going to update uh, that envelope um, uh, line color so that it looks a bit uh, attractive. Okay, and let's make it very bright. Actually, let's make this like maybe a white. And I, I'm doing a white so it looks like it's not real. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've done the same thing, except instead of just defining a pure envelope, I've used this envelope with the levels, with the concept of levels. So now let's do the same with the top envelope. So we'll use envelope. And we'll delete this, we'll delete the height. We'll change the number of levels up like that. Okay, now the advantage of this is that we are gonna be able to use our site coverage and our site metrics uh, more appropriately. It's also forcing the planner at the envelope level to consider floor to floor height. 
because uh, very frequently you get, say, uh, a height control of 8.5, 10, and 11. So is it, the question is, do you want three or four stories? You know, or do you, does everyone need to do very short stories, like 2.8? So it's often quite useful to use levels. Okay, so now I'm going to delete all of this, and I'm going to copy this guy. And this uh, sort of shows you just how quick this is, how quickly this works. Uh, and actually, whilst we're here, before I move on, I may make one more widget. And uh, one or two, why not? Okay, so you can see two expressions of envelope planning. Uh, so now let's make another widget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, courtyard typology block by drawing a rectangle and getting into that flow builder. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to shrink it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat the outside of this courtyard typology block as the boundary. And I'm going to, um, our first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke dash the, the side and I'm going to set it to 40 and 20. So 40 and 20 with no offset. Initially, I'm going to grab those strokes and I'm going to offset those things 20 to the left. So inwards 20. And then I'm going to add this envelope usage. And um, I'll delete the levels. We don't need that. Now, this has come in 20. So I'm going to now offset this polygon in 22. And I'm going to turn it into a landscape. Simple. And delete all of this stuff. And save. And just see what we've wrought. Okay. Uh, Something's gone wrong. What have I done? Offset the polygon minus 22. Save. Okay, and those guys are offset the wrong way. So rather than offsetting them to the, that side, I'm going to have to go into the flow builder and offset those polygons to the right. Okay, fantastic. Then I'm going to save. Okay, now if we stretch this out a bit more, you'll see that's good. Now you can see there's some overlapping here, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that um, in the stroke dash. I'll add that that five back. That's going to help that. And I'm going to go 40 and 40, so these things don't touch as much. Save. All right, and now if I add a, a levels property, that should propagate down through this entire thing uh, and in the right way. Okay, now you can see that's good. It's roughly good. Uh, in some instances, it overlaps. So I'm actually not going to solve that problem. I'm just going to leave that for now. Uh, and I'm just going to get the user to solve that in their own way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two courtyards on this northern side. All right. Now there's an issue there, and I'll show you sort of can um, show you. Now we do have to solve it, so I'll show you how we do that. Is we are going to uh, shrink or uh, line shorten, and we'll just do 10. 10, 10 is perfect. That's actually solved it. Okay, so delete that guy now and copy this dude across, and we have these envelopes. Now what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add another street. All right, cool. And maybe we add some more levels there. Okay. And should we do another widget? Uh, yeah, why not? Let's do one more planning widget that's just a simple one. And it's similar to this one except it's an open line. So we're going to just um, offset it, open the flow builder. Okay, so we're going to stroke dash. Well, actually, maybe it's not a stroke dash. Maybe this is just, uh, rather than offsetting a line, we'll offset a polygon. And we'll say the base of this thing is 13 meters on both sides. And then on top, there's a 10 meter, um, also a polygon is a 10 meter. And what we'll do before we do that is we'll shorten this line, line shorten by 10 and by four and four so those are going to be the end offsets 
and this can be envelope with stack order uh, two and this won't have levels and this can be envelope with stack order one and this can have two levels so this one doesn't have a levels parameter this one is hard coded to two and so if we save changes and we add a levels at the top that's going to flow to the second the one which without a levels property and so that's going to be the thing that changes so the one with the hard coded two levels it's not going to change all right so this is a different kind of planning envelope and the instinct here is there's probably a retail podium and then that uh, let's let's change this this is base envelope so we know what's what and this is top envelope uh, and the top envelope is got a smaller offset 10 instead of 13 and remember it's got this line shorten of four so if we make that seven and seven you'll see it comes in okay all right so a couple of ways of doing envelopes and um, kind of derivative of each other not the most useful um, as in it's not it's not automating anything except some some pretty mundane tasks okay but what it is doing uh, is now that we've done this is is it's giving us uh, our site our site X everything area so if I shrink this you can see that number goes up because it's the area of the site minus the roads and minus the buildings and I believe even minus the landscape so let's get rid of that landscape or let's just go rather than doing that let's get the site coverage and let's get the site let's get the road area square meters and the building total area in square meters and the site area and just get that site area minus a minus minus b as in minus both of those things it's like so 30,000 okay so this shouldn't affect 